Hey guys, welcome back to Tracy's Place. As you see, I am doing a more um, spiritual video. Um, people have asked me to kind of get back to what I have done in the past, dealing with marriage and family and different things like that. So it's time for me to mix it up a little bit. So today, as you see by the title, I'm doing a video called Don't Marry Him, Girl. Um, and it can also easily be said, Don't Marry Her, Man. So stay tuned hold on to your seats we're going to delve into being or why you should not be unequally yoked stay tuned okay uh delving into being unequally yoked this is a biblical uh, basically term um and a lot of people that watch me i know are both believers or unbelievers but this is more of a um it is from a Christian standpoint, a biblical standpoint. and um, But if you are not a believer, you can still watch and get something good out of it as well. So hold on, stay tuned. But being unequally yoked uh, basically comes from, you know, back way back in the day uh, when people farmed or, you know, till their land and things like that. Um, they used animals, of course, to pull the plow and everything. And most likely, um, more than time, it was oxen. And oxen had this uh, board or uh, basically a yoke that kept them bound together. And where one went, the other one went to the right, you know, you, it, there'd be a struggle. If they were pulling the, a separate way, there would be a struggle. So basically, there lies the same principle for relationships, um, whether it be a friendship, whether it be a business partnership, whether it be, from what I'm talking about today, the standpoint of marriage. Do not be unequally yoked. Uh, it is an unpleasant experience, and God does not desire that for us. Um, it goes against the will of God. And uh, like today I said, I'm, I am saying it from a marriage perspective and if God doesn't want us in relationships uh, just with friends and uh, partnerships and different things with unbelievers or people that we could be unequally yoked with he certainly does not want it in a marriage marriage mirrors Christ and the church Christ is the head of the church as as a man is the head of the wife um, if a woman is to be submissive to a, to a man, to her husband, and is to be a helper to her husband, he is also supposed to be the leader of her in a godly way. He is to uh, provide for her. He is to protect her, look out for her best interest. He would not seek to harm her. The things that Christ are to the church, that is what a man is to be to his wife. And in marriage glorifies that relationship of Christ and the church and should be a mirror for the world to see how Christ is with the church and how marriage should be between a husband and a wife. Okay, the two scriptures that I am pulling from today is Amos 3 and 3 and also 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. Amos 3 and 3 states, can two walk together except they agree? Which back in the day, of course, in the Old Testament, God was dealing with his chosen people, the children of Israel. And he was saying, you know, how can we walk together? How can you follow me? How can you be my, how can we be in this thing together? If you're doing things contrary to, you know, my statutes, my laws, my commandments, um, they were doing all kinds of things and um, just being worldly, you know, a lot of people think that back then everybody was all pristine and this and that. A lot of the same problems that we're going, that we are dealing with now, the same sins and the same things that are going on, were still, they were going on back in the Old Testament days. They were just um, brought about differently. Today we have social media and TV and, you know, things like that. And back then, I don't know how things got around and how they did it, but it was done. And the Bible speaks about it. There was a lot of fornication. There was a lot of idolatry and there was a lot of different things. So um, the things today, it's the same way. 
God does not want us to be unequally yoked. God didn't want to be in relationship with people that were not walking with him, did not believe the things that he was telling them, did not want to walk in the ways that he was showing them. So in marriage, we are not to um, be in cohesive relationship. And marriage is the the deepest relationship, human relationship that you can have. You know, a lot of people will say, you know, blood is thicker than water. Um, they'll take their family stance against their spouse a lot of times. Um, but your marital relationship is far greater, if I may say that, and I pray that I'm in the will of God saying that, but um, more important even than a mother-child relationship, God, um, I would say, holds a, a different standard to that. With a mother and child relationship, uh, the Bible even says to where the husband leaves father and mother and is to be joined to his wife. So there's a point of cut off so to speak you still honor your mother you still honor your father but there's a cut off point somewhat with even your family ties you know so um even you know with siblings and different things you know people will say you know well, my brother and my sister you know such and such and so and so and you know i was i was here before you was here there a sibling will say that sometimes to an in-law you know the married the person that married their sibling you know i was here before you and i'll be here when you when you're gone i'll still be here hey hold up wait a minute um god holds that relationship with husband and wife in higher regard than a sibling relationship and a mother father relationship uh god has joined together man and wife in marriage um also that man or woman chose to be with that spouse he was stuck with you um and i don't mean to sound mean in that way but um you know a, a child cannot pick a parent and a child cannot pick their sibling so they were kind of put in this thrown into this and um but they choose their spouse so it's a different relationship and 2 Corinthians 6 and 14 states, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Basically saying what I said before, he does not want you in relationship, regardless of what relationship, you know, a friend relationship, business partner, I would imagine it, you know, saying to that's kind of a modern thing. But in a marriage relationship, he does not want you unequally yoked with an unbeliever. First of all, you do not want to be married together with someone that has different morals and different values than you do. The stronger of the two will draw. But God wants you to be with someone that has the same morals and values, you know, Christian beliefs that you have. Um, the stronger of the two will draw, like I said, just like in that oxen relationship. If you have a thicker, more stoutly built oxen on this side and the other one is a little weaker or you know what have you then that stronger ox is going to draw so it's the same way as if a you know a guy and a girl get together and sometimes they think that i can change the other person and sometimes it ends up being the other way that person will end up changing you and that is very unfortunate because sometimes you get together or you know you you come up maybe in a christian household or whether you're a new christian or you know from being an atheist or what have you and you're not that strong yet for some reason and um you kind of get together with somebody who has um you know they are charismatic and they're they're wonderful on the outside and they have you know they're a people person and you know they just look wonderful and um you get together with them and you find out that things are totally totally different a lot of times a person will put on a front in order to get you sometimes a person may not cuss a lot around you um, they know that you're a Christian, but they're not. And it could be even two professed believers. It doesn't have to be, you know, a person that's an unbeliever and a person that believes. You can be unequally yoked with another that professes to be a Christian. 
you know, you may get together with someone and, you know, they don't do certain things because they know what your viewpoint is on it. So, and, but they love you. They, they, they adore you and everything and they want to be better, but they are not there yet. And a, a lot of times won't be there for a long time and they get hooked up with you hoping that maybe you can bring them along and you're believing that you can bring them along and it just does not happen that way. Uh, it could be a person that, like I said, cusses a lot. Um, they don't cuss in the beginning or either you're, you know, they're, you're dating or what have you. And a lot of stuff comes out after marriage. Um, they could be hiding uh, a secret, you know, with their drinking. Um, you have to check people's track record as well. Um, when you get together with someone, now they have a paper trail, so to speak. That would be social media, and it can also be people that know them. Check out their social media. Um, check out what they're liking on Facebook and, you know, what, what gets their attention. Uh, what they watch on TV, what they listen to, what kind of music they listen to. You know, when they are on Instagram and you can, if you're friends with them, you can go on their Instagram or go on their Facebook, Twitter, whatever. Are they liking all the big booty pictures and all the, uh, what do you call it, Instagram models and, um, you know, different things like that and the scantily dressed and all that. Are they liking all that stuff? What are they giving their attention to? Do they go to church? Um, do they really love the Lord? Not just go to church, but do they really love the Lord? Do they really hold his statues dear to their heart? Are they, are they trying, seeking to walk, you know, in the ways after the Lord? Or are they kind of hitting and missing, hitting and missing? Because these things are very important after you get married and when you have children. Because when you have children, nothing hits harder than when you have children. And if you're linked up with someone um, that is either a different religion than you or someone who doesn't believe in anything really, but they're just a nice person, they're a wonderful person. Or if you link up with a so-called Christian who really isn't, you know, on the same level as you. When you have children, the stuff will hit the fan. Um, they're gonna, there's going to come a time when it's time for that baby to be blessed or going, you know, you want to take your children to church and then you may find, dear sir or, or, or sweet ma'am, that your spouse does not want to go to church with you. They kind of fall off if it's not ingrained in them. Um, they're not going to want to go to church and you're going to feel like a single parent touting, toting your little children to church by yourself. Um, whereas you will like for your children to grow up in a household where mom and dad are seeking the Lord together for their household and you're just going, you know, by yourself or you are married to someone in a different religion. And when it comes time and you want to get them baptized, and, um, you know, in a Christian baptism and they could be Muslim or they could be Buddhist or what have you. And of course, they don't believe in that. Um, it could even be unequally yoked as far as denomination. One can be Catholic and one can be um, apostolic or, or, or Church of God in Christ, Baptist, what have you. They have different stipulations for the way that they, you know, baptize. It's a sprinkling for Catholics and for um, most Christian denominations, it is a submersion. So there's a lot of different, you, you have to think about denominations. Some people believe you have to be saved by doing this or you only saved or you're not saved when this doesn't happen, you know, da, 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 da. You have to be on one accord. First of all, it, it must be biblical. You must follow the word of God. So this is from a Christian standpoint. But you must believe in the word of God from the Bible. You have to make sure that you both line up with the word of God. Not just all the time just believing what each other believes. But you need to be trying to believe, you know, what's, what is biblically sound. Okay? All right. And you might say, well, what are some other ways that are you know, unequally yoked that, you know, may not just jump out at people. 
Okay, I'm going to tell you now. You may be a family-oriented person and love to go around your family. You want to spend holidays with your family and, um, you know, you're sociable with your family or even some friends sometimes. Then, on the other hand, that potential spouse or your spouse, they are not. They are to themselves. They want to stay closed off. They just want your little family to be together and be enclosed in this one little bubble. Uh, they don't want you to socialize too much with anybody. They have jealousy issues and different things like that. Um, they believe that your family, you know, is leading you this way or is getting in the way. Um, it, no, it is not good for you to be overly consumed with your family. Um, you should your your home comes first, of course. But on the other hand, it is you, it is good to spend time with both your families, um, especially when children are involved, so that they can know their grandparents on both sides and their aunts and uncles and different things. Um, but you don't want to be closed off, and you don't want a person that just likes to be to themselves and doesn't have any friends, doesn't get along with their family. Um, you know, they're just kind of socially awkward. Uh, that will bring about a strain on the relationship. And another issue, this is kind of uh, for the woman somewhat. Um, I think it could be for a man too, but more so for the woman. Um, we know that a woman is a helpmeet. And a lot of times, men don't like to hear that the woman is the neck. <laughs> There's a saying that, you know, the man is the head and the woman is the neck. That's somewhat true, um, although you must keep this very important principle in mind. A woman is to be a helper, the help me to her husband, and she is the support. The neck supports the head, so she does help support him. But when you join up to a man that uh, doesn't have any direction, um, is not already you know, walking in his calling or what the Lord has him to do. And I don't even mean as far as being a pastor or he doesn't have to be a, you know, sometimes people think, you know, be, uh, helping your spouse in their calling is always this big title or something. Your husband could be someone who feeds the homeless or your potential husband could be someone who his job or his gift or calling is to feed the homeless or to minister at the jail to um in politics he could be placed in politics what are you sweet girl dear lady submitting to what are you helping with if you're supposed to be there help me you know what are you signing up for what are you signing up to help for are you signing up to help someone who doesn't have any assignment who doesn't know what their assignment is so you have to keep that in mind also you have to know how that person is with money look at their track record with their money their savings you know if you're in this close relationship to where you're about to get married or what have you you need to be looking at bank accounts you need to know their credit score you need to know a lot of personal things about their money habits and if you don't align, that's a red flag. Also, you need to know what is their work ethic. Are they lazy? Are they, you know, you can't get them to do anything. They don't want to do anything. They don't know, you know, what their purpose is. Uh, they can't hold a job. Or are they at the other extreme to where they're workaholic and all they do is work, 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 work. And there's no time for play, no time to relax. You have to have a balance and you need to know what your spouse is into because you need to know what you're headed in for. What are you going to do with that money that you both have? Are you going to give some to the church? Are you going to, you know, you not? Are you going to give to uh, different charities? Are you going to help people with the money? Are you just going to save, save, save and not spend any on yourselves? Or are you going to live lavishly and not help others you need to know what each other's goal is with that money you need to know does that other person drink and if they do is it in excess i'm not one that believes a christian should not drink because i do not that's me from what i have read 
I don't see that as you know what God is saying because there are some scriptures in the Bible that for certain people it says uh, don't be given too much wine indicating that that some can drink wine um, I think depending on your calling you cannot drink wine at all I have to double check that but I believe there are some people with certain callings that cannot drink wine at all um, and then you know drinking it's a spirit you know we call them spirits alcohol is a spirit and if you get overindulged in you know it's not called a spirit for no reason <laughs> so that a, a lot of drinking brings on a lot of spirits a lot of different emotions a lot of different you know outbursts and a lot of different aggravations and rivalry and different things that's why you're not supposed to get drunk you drink, some people can drink, but don't drink to get drunk. And then there are some um, scriptures in the Bible that says, you know, it's it's um, it's helpful for some things to drink, certain infirmities and, and things. So be careful with that drinking thing. Okay, touchy subject with Christians. Music. Is your home going to be filled with the music of the Lord, you know, gospel playing or Christian music, you know, this, that, and the other, or is your home going to be filled with a lot of um, rap and that, you know, kind of seedy soul R&B or punk rock and, you know, certain things that are not necessarily Christianly. Now, I, I again, don't believe, and I would have to, you know, really do even more so soul searching about this, so I do not want to lead anyone astray. I don't think all music is something that the Lord is against necessarily. Um, I believe that there is music, very inspiring music that you can listen to, even beautiful love songs that promote marriage and, you know, togetherness in marriage and even things about friendship and stuff like that. I think that that's all right to listen to. Now, that's just Tracy. <laughs> There's some Christians that don't think you should li listen to anything except gospel music or Christian-based music, hymns and, um, you know, different things like that. So you have to go on what the Lord is telling you. I'm not going to tell you one way or the other because I, you know, that's, that's just something that I believe. So you have to know what kind of, atmosphere that's what I'm getting at you have to know what kind of atmosphere your home is going to be um, ingrained with and what kind of things your children will be listening to as well what kind of movies do you watch television what do you entertain with your eyes so that's very important when looking at that other person that's basically looking at their track record as well you have to notice things about them when you are seeking to get married, looking for that certain other person. You have to, I hate to say that they are under a microscope, but if you're considering marriage, they are under a microscope. So you have to, to kind of take into consideration everything that they do, everything that they say, and the places that they go, the people that they go with, and the things that they entertain. You have to know also if that man or woman, regardless of their background, goes through men or women like tissues. Sometimes old habits don't die hard. They don't go away quickly, but they have an issue with the opposite sex. Um, you have to look at that when you are potentially, you know, seeking to get married to that person because that could be a big issue later on in your marriage um you may not see any signs of it um while you're dating they may be able to keep it hidden or maybe they are trying to manage it but they're managing it on their own and haven't sought the lord's help and he hasn't delivered them from it so it can be a big problem when you get married and that is cause for divorce and um yeah always look into that their past with the opposite sex, their present even with the opposite sex. Watch how they relate to other, you know, the opposite sex, other women, other men. Um, watch how they relate 
and carry themselves around other sexes. And by any means, do not settle and say, oh, well, look what happened in the Bible. I hear that so many times. Um, men will say this to kind of um, make their habits or what they do seem all right. And sometimes women will settle and say, oh, well, it happened in the Bible, so I'm just going to overlook it and hope and pray that things change. People will say, or men will say, you know, well, Samuel was like this. He had a lot of women and, you know, this, this, that, and the other. Look at David. Uh, look at so-and-so. Uh, you cannot do that. Things that are in the Bible are in there for many reasons and a big reason is as an example of something not to do. So make sure you keep that in mind. Don't settle and say, and say you know, what was in the Bible. You know, if you're a woman, don't be settling for that. And if you're a man, don't give that excuse. Things that happen in the Bible are used for many things, you know, to... Um, for edification to to teach people things you know different things like that and it's for an example and a lot of times it's as an example of what not to do and what I mean by that is God did not call for um, not Samuel but um, Solomon to have all those one women all a lot of those women um, that he had concubines wives or what have you turned him away from the way he was supposed to be with his God. And they had other idols and other gods that they were trying to turn him, you know, against his God with. Um, you know, David had a flesh problem with women and it was not all right. <laughs> Even though David was a man after God's own heart, not that part of the heart. And the next thing, you have to be careful with this one. Uh, it's kind of a sticky situation because you can't help, for the most part, who you fall in love with. Um, it may be okay with the Lord for you to go ahead and proceed in this situation. It may not. Um, but you seek the Lord in this situation too. And that is for marrying someone that has a child when you do not have a child. Uh, it's It would be better, a more ideal situation, like I said, unless the Lord says this is the person for you and this is your path. But... Um, it's kind of a sticky situation when you marry someone with a child because you go into that either what we say today, baby mama drama or baby daddy, you know, issues. So um, sometimes you, well, all the time you have to look at the situation when you're dating, you know, and leading up to marriage. If that baby's biological father or the baby's biological mother has friction with the father or mother that you're with, you know, of that child. Um, you have to look at all of that because it could be a sign of what's to come. It could be a sign of worse things to come. So you have to be, you know, prayerful and mindful of that. Um, there's going to be day-to-day -day interactions with that child. You know, some parents, the person that you marry might not have a lot of interaction with that child. If that other, you know, person has custody and it's, if there's been some issue or fallout or whatever, sometimes the child is not even, you know, in the parent that you're going to marry. It's not even in their life too much. But then sometimes they are a hands-on parent as well. Sometimes the person you're married marrying may have joint custody or either visitation and that child is either living with you all they may have custody rather a lot of times the mother has custody so um that situation can be very touchy um either the child is living with you or there is joint custody or there is visitation so that other parent that your spouse is going to have to co-parent with that, the, with the other parent. And um, depending on the personality and disposition of that other parent, um, it can be very um, rivalrous with you. 
Um, they can be very either jealous or um, cantankerous, you know, argumentative and just wanting to start stuff just for no reason. So you have to think about this. And sometimes it plays on the child. The child may bring in things to your marriage, your, your relationship uh, from that other mother or father. They tell them things sometimes and um, get things in their head and then they're angry when they come to your house or they don't like you because something the mother or father has said. So it's, it's not always the best situation. So be in prayer about that. That's something you need to discuss with your potential spouse, how things will be, how you will, will handle this, that, and the other. The spouse... The spouses always come first. Now, you're never to leave the child out or anything like that. But um, the, the spouse always comes first. You're co to consider the spouse while also at the same time taking care of that child. Uh, but be considerate always of the spouse relationship. All right. And lastly, you may say, and I hate it if you are at this point, but you may say, I'm already married and I'm having this problem. We are unequally yoked. What can I do? Well, what you are to do is to pray and you need to get help. And when I say get help, you know, a lot of people don't want other people to know their business and what they're going through. Um, that's understandable and it can be shameful um, and people can look down on you and different things like that. But you don't have to tell someone that you know. You can go to a uh, Christian therapist. You can go to another a pastor um, at another location. Um, but make sure, make sure the help that you get is godly wisdom. Make sure it is godly wisdom. I can surely understand, you know, you're scared to divulge things to certain people that you may know. You don't know if they're going to spread your business, this, that, and the other. You really don't know that about anyone. But pray about where the Lord wants you to get help. And like I said, you can always seek outside help, but make sure it is godly wisdom. And remember, a fool despiseth wisdom. People that do not want to get help, do not want to get wisdom in this area, are not trying to get better, and, you know, they're leaving their spouse out there just in heartache and in pain. That's foolish behavior. You are to seek wisdom. Get godly counsel. And, um, yeah, let the Lord lead you. All right, guys, so I hope this information helped. I hope that it gave you insight and clarification into the biblical meaning of being unequally yoked with someone, you know, getting married to someone. And I hope this either either settled you or either put you at alert. So I will see you guys right back here on Tracy's Place. Share this video. Someone else could use this information. And um, yeah, share it with others. Subscribe if you have not subscribed. And hit that notification bell. That way you'll be notified when I upload a video. All right. Love you all. And be blessed with the best blessings of the Lord. Bye.